Now, the question of whether repeated blows to the head in football can cause long-term brain damage has long troubled scientists. Now, for the first time, researchers say they have found a possible link. Scientists from University College London and Cardiff University studied the brains of six deceased players, all of whom had developed dementia in later life. As Michael Fitzpatrick reports, the study is far from conclusive. Heading the ball is an important skill for any footballer, but could it be causing long-term damage? Diagonal ball again, there's McLaughlin with the glancing header! In this latest study, scientists looked at the brains of six lifelong footballers. Four of them showed signs of the brain injury, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, known as CTE, which is linked to repeated blows to the head. I can see within a particular age how there could be that correlation between heading one of those very heavy balls constantly or on many occasions or being hit on hit the head and dementia. I'm just not so sure in the modern day game and with the modern day balls if, if, if that would be, would be the same. The science is far from certain, with those behind the study admitting they can't definitively prove a link between heading the ball and dementia. Football has changed a lot since the six players involved in this research last played the game. The balls are now much lighter and there's a greater awareness around concussion. While this study didn't analyse the risks to young footballers, organisations like the Professional Footballers Association have recently called for a ban on very young players heading the ball. We operate an elite clinic in, a, in America and it's quite interesting the process that they've taken that it's illegal for under 10s to head the ball. If a 10 year old or under deliberately heads the ball, a free kick is given against them. Um, and there's also as well restrictions in place for 11 to 13 year olds. So it is something that is quite alarming that we we'll need to look at the scientific approach and uh, go in the guidance that we're being given by our National Football Association, the AFA. I think I might as well get on with it and enjoy my child life and if it does affect me in later life. I just have to take care of it then, so. But uh, yeah, you always have to be careful because you don't know when, like, when you could really like pull up and really hurt your neck, and it's like sometimes you can't be scared. The study has prompted calls for more research into a long suspected issue in the sport. A spokesperson for the Irish Football Association said, while the UCL research finds no definitive link between CTE and heading a football, we support the author's call for further large-scale study in this area. Michael Fitzpatrick, BBC Newsline, Belfast.